to read to you starting uh, from John, 2 John 1, 9. 2 John chapter 1, verse 9. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. So whoever is transgressing and abides not in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. All through uh, this past year on this channel, I've been sharing Christ's doctrines with you uh, about what it means to truly be one in his spirit, uh, uh, discussing prophecy, discussing how Jesus is the only door, he's the only gate, he's that narrow way that leads to life and that no one comes to the Father except through him. This is holding to the doctrine of Christ, that Christ died for our sins, that we can do nothing to save ourselves, it is totally by the sovereign grace of God, and so on. So when people say to you, or say to us as Christians, born-again Christians, that doctrine doesn't matter, don't fight over doctrine, we're all children of God, it doesn't matter what doctrine you hold to. According to 2 John 1, 9, it says, whoever does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. The Lord said he is not the author of confusion, but of peace. The father of lies is the one who is the author of confusion. Jesus is not the author of confusion. In this ecumenical movement that we have going on today, uh, there's a movement in particular that I wanted to bring up to you. It was started by a Protestant organization, and it's called John 7, the John 17 One Movement. And in this prayer, the Lord uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed that all of us would be one. What he's talking about here, and all of us being one, is born-again believers. Remember, Jesus said, you must be born again, or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, these Protestants that started this, uh, this John 17, 1 movement are not mentioning repentance. They're not mentioning confession of sin and repentance. They're not mentioning uh, eternal separation from God and that you must be born again or you will not see God. You will not see the kingdom of God. Uh, the Pope in Rome is not preaching this. Uh, repentance and being born again. I don't think I've ever heard that term come out of the Vatican, being born again. Yet Jesus says this is a must. But the world is trying to create a unity in their own strength and in their own ability amongst men uh, before Christ returns. We cannot take the place of the Prince of Peace. It is only when the Lord returns that this world will truly be uh, peaceful and experience that unity amongst truly born-again believers that we're hungering for. Again, whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. That to me is a very, very uh, sobering thought. And I want to bring to you this article uh, from the John 17 movement. <clears throat> so I can get this for you here. It's from www.john17movement.com. And I want you to take a look at this for yourselves. The john17movement.com. It's a, this is all about ecumenism, and the, like I said, these are Protestants starting this, and at the end of this article, they even have a video of Pope Francis on here, and Pope Francis is talking about we're all children of God and unity and, <clears throat> you know, the same message of ecumenism, that doctrine doesn't matter, uh, these different doctrines that we hold are dividing. I'm not talking about doctrines, I'm talking about the doctrine of Christ. A doctrine means the teaching of Christ what Christ taught from the scriptures, what you read in the scriptures, uh, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, and what Jesus himself said, that is his doctrine. That's what we are to hold to and be one in, Christ's doctrine. Not in each other's doctrines, the doctrine of the Baptist Church, or the doctrine of the Catholic Church, or the doctrine of the Lutheran Church, and so on. We're to hold to the doctrine of Christ alone. And God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And he will unite truly born-again believers together in his own doing and his own strength, not in ours and what we can do. It says here uh, in the John 17, 1 website, it's no secret that division in a family brings harm and pain on many levels. The church, which is described as the family of God, remains divided. The attitudes and harsh judgments uh, amongst professing Christians 
have caused deep wounds and centuries of conflicts. And they go on to quote John 17, 1, Father, I pray that those who believe in me will be one so that the world will know that you sent me. And they go on and on here in their ecumenical statements here on this website. Uh, like I said, and they even are, they're even airing the Pope on their website in a video that he made when he uh, teleconferenced with this John 17 movement. Now, to the untrained eye, or I should say to the unbelieving eye, the non-born again eye, all of this sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds harmonious and beautiful and lovely, but this is not the doctrine of Christ. We are not to be one with the world. We are not to allow every single doctrine to infiltrate our walk with Christ. I'm sorry, but there are doctrines out there that are not biblical. I am not one with a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness. I'm not one with the Vatican and their doctrines. I'm not. Jesus said, do not suppose I come to bring peace on the earth. I come to bring a sword. A mother will be against her daughter, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, a father against his son, a father-in-law against his son-in-law, and so on. Uh, what Jesus was talking about is he will come to bring a sword. We are not to compromise the truth of the doctrine of Christ to make peace with the world. We are to love our fellow man as we want to be loved. Christ even told us to love an enemy, but he never says to compromise his doctrine, which is the only truth. So I, I encourage you to look up this John 17, 1 movement. Uh, it is very ecumenical from a Protestant standpoint, and now they're including the Pope of Rome in this. And I encourage you to watch the Pope's video at the bottom of that page. So this is all becoming very, very in your face now. And one closing thought. Up until now, up until this, I'd say, past maybe 40 or 50 years since John Paul II was reigning, we didn't see this push, this strong urging push for ecumenism uh, in this world until recently, I'd say, maybe within the last 40 or 50 years. Uh, I have not seen this push for ecumenism. But the Reformation was created uh, hundreds of years ago, was created by God to create that sword that Jesus was talking about. The Reformation is all about that. It's about standing on the doctrine of Scripture alone, sola scriptura. That's what I stand on, sola scriptura. Nothing extra biblical can be trusted completely, 100%. Only what Jesus tells you in the Scriptures and what God shows you from Genesis to Revelation can be trusted, sola scriptura. But have you ever noticed that even in the, like I said, the, the medieval times, the 14th, 15th, 16th centuries, when the Reformation was really strong and uh, exposing the deeds of darkness, according to Ephesians 5.11, uh, that that's falling away. All that work that these patriarchs did in Christ to make sure that the gospel was honored and preserved and understood by the common man is now being undone. Let's just preach to people love and unity and Proverbs says, that the wounds of a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. This is what the Vatican is doing. They're kissing you with a lie when they tell you that we are all children of God and doctrine does not matter. According to 2 John 1, 9, it does matter because we are told if you do not abide, to abide means to live. If you do not live abiding continually in the doctrine of Christ and hold to that to the end, you do not have God. And this is not me saying this. This is the scripture saying this. Thank you for listening today.